The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, I got them both on, so if we get... You want me to try it with just this one? All right. We got a new microphone. We're still fig- trying to figure out the, uh, the, feed- the feedback level. So right about now, it should be coming to an end uh, about 6,000 miles away in a little, um, little place called Belgium. There's a, a race happening. It's the Belgian Grand Prix a Formula One race. Does anybody other than the two other people I know watch Formula One? Oh, thank gosh. Have it. Thank you. There's a couple of people there. <clears throat> so this um, metaphor will hopefully make sense. But if you're a NASCAR redneck, it'll make the same amount of sense. So don't worry about it. But there's a lot involved in getting these cars to work at a, at, at a very, very precise level, right? You have to have what's called uh, down, uh, downforce, right? Because if these things go so fast... They'll fly. I mean, they'll fly in the air. But so you have to have the, all these. The trim has to be set right. The front has to be set right. The back has to be set right. And just to keep them from literally flying off the air. So you've got to have that, right? And then you've got to have lift. You, you, you want to make it go fast. You want to keep, keep it off the ground. So you want you know, the, the least amount of pressure on the tires is lift. So you need to have lift as well as downforce. So trying to keep it on the ground without flying off. And then the third thing, of course, is power, right? You gotta have a good engine, a good transmission. Everything has to be working perfectly to win one of these races. And these guys are so good that over the course of maybe a three mile track, the top, there's only 20 people racing at a time, but for the most part, unless somebody has an engine breakdown or something goes wrong, they stay within about four tenths of a second of each other. That's how good they are at what they do because they try and they try and they try to find that thing that's just right. So that pearl of great price, you see what I'm going for here, that pearl of great price, that thing that, you know, pearls just don't come out looking good, right? They just, just don't find a pearl and just, you know, open one up and a, you're, you're down in Charleston and you're getting some rope or Cherokees and you get a, you get a clam and out comes this, or the oyster and out comes this, oh, look at this pearl, I bet it's worth $20 million. No, it doesn't work that way. It's same thing. Right? It's just a, it's a, over time, over development, over just the right conditions, does it turn into the pearl of great price? <clears throat> Excuse me. Our faith is that pearl of great price. We have to have things that are just in the right balance in order for us to be able to achieve. Right? And that sounds like that's really complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Right? We have the Ten Commandments. Right? We have the Ten Commandments to get us to the point to the, the, that we are a fine running machine. But then we have the Beatitudes where we start to polish and make ourselves even better uh, than we were before. And God, our Creator, loves us just as we are, but He wants us to be better. And the way that we do that is by the practice of the sacraments. We, we, uh, we receive the sacraments worthily. You don't receive communion if you're not receiving it in a state of grace. You go to confession when you do things that are against the Ten Commandments or uh, that, that are, 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 are part of the seven deadly sins. You read Scripture, right? You read Scripture. I know we're Catholics, but you probably got a Bible. Read it. It's what it's there for. Right, and then we read spiritual reading or spiritual podcast. I tell you what, this weekend, everybody, all you maniacs who are who are listening to that big square-headed 
Mike Schmidt, Father Mike Schmidt. Just kidding. Just jealous of his good looks. Everybody be cool. Everybody be cool. Every, they just had this section on confession. And everybody was like tromping into the confessional yesterday. Well, I listened to the, the other thing, so I thought I'd come and make a good confession. Like, that's fantastic. It's exactly what you're supposed to be doing, right? We're tweaking our faith. We're adjusting the downshift, adjusting, adjusting the downforce, adjust, adjusting the lift, and trying to get that little extra speed around the corners. It doesn't just stop, right? You can't just put a good race car out and never do anything to it. It'll start to fall apart through all the wear and tear of what goes on in racing. We can't just expect, our, expect ourselves... <clears throat> to always be functioning at a high level unless we are tweaking ourselves. And those tweaks are the things that I just told you about. But now we get to do something fantastic. Sometimes we, we get to get one right fresh out of the factory, right? And we get to put the ultimate tune-up on this kid and make sure uh, that he is ready to go. He, so he's going to be perfectly adjusted. It's just for you guys, that's right, for you guys to keep adjusting him as, we, as he grows and turns into a, a, a nice young man and a good Christian. I think I have taken about as much of this racing metaphor as I possibly can, so let's go get down to business, all right? All right, whoever wants to come.